Hi, good morning. Sorry, we were uh, we were having some technical issues, so we had to log out. Now, let me introduce to you again, uh, Mrs. Gauri Singh from Indore, Madhya Pradesh. She is a visionary educationist and a recipient of Dr. A.B.J. Abdul Kalam Award for her exemplary work in the field of education. She is the founder of Professor Edu Solutions, a firm that is synonymous with innovation and creative outputs in education sector. Professor Edu Solutions majorly deals in school management services along with conducting Olympiads based on artificial intelligence. <clears throat> for past 20 years, Gauri has been working in the in almost all the arenas from writing books to teaching, from training the teachers to auditing the schools. She has been uh, she has been running successfully uh, like uh, she has been the key person to develop a program elevate for formative assessment, which ran successfully in six countries and 500 schools across the country. The latest addition to her kitty is the Seas Global Women Achievers Award for her outstanding work in the field of education. She has trained more than 500 teachers and principals and has taken enormous, numerous classes and trainings for parents and teachers. So let's welcome Gauri. Good morning, Gauri. Thank you so much. Very good morning, ma'am, and thank you once again for introducing me in a huge way. Mm -hmm. And uh, hope whatever conversation we have, uh, it would match up uh, to the stalwarts that we have been introducing. And uh, let's start. We have uh, yeah. yes. So, Gauri, uh, like my usual uh, question, basically you are an educational auditor, right? What brings you into audit auditing from teaching? Okay, uh, so ma'am, uh, my first work was with corporates. So I was also associated with, uh, you know, telecommunication companies earlier. And uh, once you get into education, uh, you know, it just pulls you back, right? So it's like, uh, you know, slowly and gradually, there is so much of creativity in this field and there is so much of uh, improvisation that we can do. So school auditing, yes. Uh, it's not a practice for fault finding. It is just, you know, to find where all we can improve and give uh, an enormous uh, and a beautiful uh, pedagogical structure to the whole, uh, you know, education fraternity. So that is where I came in uh, when, you know, education uh, for just education improvements. The, edu uh, the main topic for today is the educational trends to look for the for in the new normal. So, how would you uh, like take it ahead? What are the trends that are going to be prevalent uh, once uh, things become normal? All right. So, ma'am, before talking about the trends, I will also like to talk about the undercurrent that is running right now. Okay, because there is so much of, you know, uh, chaos that we are dealing with. It's such a messy situation from pedagogy. We have all of a sudden shifted into panicogogy from classroom. We have shifted to Zoom rooms, right? Yeah. So there is so much to talk about, uh, you know, before starting what is coming up. Uh, I would also like to talk about what is actually happening and may just skip our eyes. So uh, as per stats, 1.3 to 1.5 billion uh, people, uh, you know, students, they are not getting the way, you know, they go, uh, used to get the learning earlier. So it uh, comprises of around 72% of the students who are majorly deprived of education in some way or the other, right? So uh, we are talking about the privilege lot. We are talking about children and debating whether the online classes are good or not, whether the schools are, uh, you know, going, uh, uh, they're taking the proper initiatives or not, fees, no fees. But what we are actually forgetting that there is one section in society that we are not talking about uh, the marginalized ones who do not have access to internet, who do not have proper, forget about internet or devices. Uh, they do not have proper electricity at times. 
how are we focusing on their learning how are we going to take their learning and without learning when a child is there uh, at home uh, especially i may uh, you know dare to say about girls uh, you know when they are sitting there we can also you know there is a lot of uh, things that are, that we are going to look up to like there is interrupted learning children when they are sitting at home they would be uh, not going to school they would be dropping out sooner or later so all these children when they are sitting at home they would it would increase to child labor coming up and uh, huge dropouts can be looked up to then uh, there would be you know there are children who used to bank on schools for proper nutrition so also mm -hmm. there would be a trend coming in malnutrition that also somebody has to see somebody would have to take care of right so online learning offline learning whatever but there is a section uh, which is like an undercurrent and that needs to be dealt on immediate basis because teenage marriages would start again uh, there would be uh, i may say that you know there would be uh, sexual assault or molestations also happening there is a lot of domestic violence that uh, you know children may witness sitting at home so and learning is not happening as a continuous process for one section in society so we will also have to you know think from a global perspective taking the inclusivity into consideration so this is what i personally feel that uh, we are going to you know deal with a section uh, a major section without learning now right 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 so how uh, uh, how would you rate it like uh, what percentage of children do you think are going to go back to school see uh, ma'am honestly speaking there would be fewer kids one things would normalize and uh, you know classes would resume fewer kids are going to go back to the school reason being i just quote an example here a country like denmark which is not that huge uh, the schools opened and within uh, say you know one or two days 24 to 48 hours around 40000 parents they signed up a page and saying that my child is not a guinea pig right so at the back of the mind you know even indian parents would have that notion that uh, by my child first right they would wait for somebody else to go start see test the water and then they would prefer sending their own children so yes fewer children are going to go to school once schools open up yeah so uh, who would take the initiative because education is very important for children absolutely yeah so uh, who would take the initiative who would be you know very very keen who for learning yeah <laughs> yes yeah, see uh, a major role has to be played by the school here because till the time the education fraternity is not giving that assurance to parents uh, see nobody would like to take risk with children this is for sure right neither you nor me so it's like there has to be a lot of assurance that needs to be come uh, that needs to come up from the institution and uh, also i would uh, like to talk about here that fewer kids would be going out of time to town for studies like when uh, the lockdown started yes so uh, there were so many children who were stuck in kota so there was uh, all of a sudden uh, parents they wanted their children back at home children were from all across the country they were being pulled back and uh, there was you know uh, so even now once things would resume to normality there would be fewer students who would be going out of town to study right and taking a step forward when we talk about children going to overseas for studying so you know that would somehow you know once the travel would resume once thing would be so normalized as uh, we to interrupt there are so many students you know who have already booked themselves to go to school right but uh, for, for, uh, for studying abroad but still they are standard and the students who study abroad they have come back home yeah correct so ma'am uh, i'll just tell you something this is quite uh, you know this is the irony that we all face uh, somehow it's in our dna to go for contemporary education isn't it 
right so once the travel would resume sooner or later going to overseas would be even easier rather than going across the country you know because we know whatever is happening country much better rather than what's happening in other countries so and plus like i said it's uh, it's something you know all the parents in india they look forward to that my child should go outside like it's in our dna no that let them get the best of the education so why restrict them to the country let them go overseas but do you so, think but, that you know, it's not that you think are safe enough to conduct during this pandemic no no not actually you know what and that is what i'm saying it would not be very easy to resume uh, you know moving out of uh, the city or moving out of the country people are not going to let it happen anytime soon every that uh, fear is certainly there you know so this is one trend that we are going to see for sure definitely like uh, let's let hope and wish that the schools reopen right but uh, what about the kids who are interested in sports social distancing is not going to be followed while they are playing sports correct correct so uh, you know this is also uh, going to be very very interesting because uh, stopping children is not that easy first so with sports you know what i personally feel there would be no fist bumps or uh, there would be no high five or a warm hand handshake or a cuddle like it used to be there before on campuses you will not be going uh, you, you know we may not witness that bone homey that uh, used to be there and uh, as children getting together so that soul part is certainly going to miss sports would resume sooner or later because that's an integral part of education however what may not happen is inter school or inter you know town uh, competitions that we were seeing and uh, so yes. yes so that may not happen but yes sports would take off slowly again uh, keeping the social distancing norms in mind right 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 so like uh, do you think social distance will lead to some getting socially uh, distant okay so social distance uh, will lead to some getting socially distant reason being uh, see it again like a section of a society who is not that privileged who have only one phone uh, at home so uh, getting you know that equality or equity in uh, education was never that easy it was kind of a fiction however uniform and getting the classroom maintained uh, that got some uniformity rte ews whatever was there it got some uniformity however those children they any how you know let us accept it they shied away from uh, giving answers they were quite meek in giving answers and now when it was picking up this happened and now they know that digitally they are lagging behind so yes it would not be socially uh, distant it would not be you know uh, the same anymore that social distant is going to increase so it's all about the equity factor which will not be the same again i think i lost you ma'am i'm very much there i'm very much there okay uh, what what do you think is uh, teaching versus learning and how do you uh, like figure it out okay so earlier how we are how we were doing it now the schools uh, they would go for two shift or three shift uh, structure they are not going to go for you know one thing at a time now when we talk about the teaching versus the learning part what would happen is earlier a lecturer used to enter or a class teacher used to enter give a, a proper lecture or pass on the learning and then you know uh, question answers were happening reading was happening however the golden uh, opportunity is there actually to practice experiential learning more focus on the learning part more flipped classroom would be seen more 
uh, there would be elements of experiential learning that would be taken care of. So teaching is not going to be the usual one which used to happen earlier. You could, uh, you know, we cannot imagine a teacher coming and giving lecture because online you know how things are. Even offline, when children they are sitting with a lot of distance, right? That is, in fact, you know, good for them because learners in a way are getting a kind of private tuition. But with educators, it's a humongous job that has come up. They would be under tremendous exactly. pressure and taking two shifts, three shifts again and again. It's not easy it's teaching the same topic all over again, three times in a day, uh, maybe. So, uh, but yes, for the students, it has, uh, you know, it's like never before. So it's a golden opportunity for them since uh, they would be getting a kind of personalized uh, tuition there. So yeah. we can say so that uh, now, now on teaching is going to go technical. Going to be tech, tech savvy teaching. Certainly, certainly, ma'am. So teaching is going to go technical. Reason being, uh, see, now since the teacher cannot uh, go with the normal lecture method mode, right? So they have to find out ways and means to keep their students involved. Now imagine a class with a 3D model, uh, you know, 3D image of a heart. And that is so fascinating. So once the class is going on online and uh, teacher, they are introducing 3D, uh, you know, maps maybe of the world or 3D uh, uh, heart structure. So this is so, so fascinating. So yes, teaching is going to go uh, the technical way. They cannot go in the same way. They have to find out ways and means for innovation. And uh, I've seen teachers, I've just met few teachers who were like 48, 58 years, who never ever were keen to touch computer. And overnight they have learned Zoom, right? So, wow. and uh, even the other platform, yes. So yes. it's like uh, yes. teachers, they have opened their rooms for everybody to come and see, right? So that is uh, a commendable thing. Uh, for them and uh, you know teaching has to go technical way they will have to find out ways and means because they are dealing with digital natives right they have no other choice so Gauri do you think uh, technology can be the sole enabler uh, sorry ma'am didn't get you do you think technology can be the sole enabler Technology can be the sole enabler. Okay, ma'am, uh, certainly not. Reason being, uh, just imagine a classroom uh, in a remote area where still a teacher uh, who is a fresh out, a fresh uh, graduate, and uh, not even you know well versed with the with the B Ed and the teaching pedagogy, taking a class in a dilapidated room, and uh, you know how can we even imagine? that teacher to go all the technical way, but we are asking for too much, let us accept it. So how can we imagine that teacher to take a class, uh, um, you know, in proper technical way and give the students the best of the things there, right? So certainly technology can be, uh, cannot be the sole enabler. And yes, there are so many devices that we're using, right? It's not easy for everybody to learn uh, all the devices, all the platform today, Byju's is there, tomorrow Unacademy is there or something else comes up, right? And we are still struggling to download all the apps on our phone. I'm talking about the better section now. And uh, one day somebody says Zoom is good, other day Microsoft Team is good, and third day some other software is coming up. So we are still struggling so much to learn and we cannot learn everything, right? Whatever, how hard we try, we cannot be well versed with all the platforms at work, you know, so easily. So uh, here the main focus would be shifted to content. What are you teaching, right? And how you're teaching it, that becomes much more important than the device you are going to use for teaching or the platform we are uh, going to use for teaching. So nice. I think, yes, technology cannot be sole enabler at all. So what do you, what, what would you say, like uh, not uh, every um, parent in the government schools is uh, like um, able to give them uh, online education and this trend is going on somewhere else also, like in the 
government schools also uh, teachers are trying to give the online classes but what about those students who cannot afford it absolutely ma'am so uh, that is what i was saying that uh, we are actually expecting too much from the parents also too much from all the stakeholders in fact uh, overnight all of a uh, all of a sudden something was imposed on us teachers who were not very technically savvy had to undergo tremendous training to understand uh, the online platform and then all of a sudden the expectations were posed on parents side by side that you will have to ensure that your children uh, attend the classes well and they are well versed and you have to be there to take care because these are the norms right when online classes are going on now imagine working parents or parents who go for daycare right for them it is so so difficult because either they compromise on their economical part or they would have to compromise on the learning part so one of the parent either they would have to stay at home or take care of the child think about a medical health worker right so health worker who has to go there and who has to be there at the job how will his or her child study at home Exactly. and then we also have the section of parents that you were talking about who don't even know what to teach the child how will that parent make them revise so what happens end up either you end up shouting or you end up you know scolding the child or beating the child because it is all about independent learning children take it casually and the burden goes on parents somewhere right that they will have to you know ensure that the learning is complete completion of homework completion of worksheets so and what if you know somebody done by yes a lot, a lot has done to be done by yes certainly so either they train them well you know or train all the children well that uh, you have to be disciplined you have to ensure that you have a timetable in place and you follow it or you know the parents will have to deal with the situation and uh, parents especially who are not that learned or they are not having all the resources in place there were parents who went ahead and bought uh, new modem uh, for wifi uh, broadbands were bought there were parents who had to you know immediately buy tablets or laptop because there was one uh, phone and they were not ready to give it to the you know children earlier somebody like me i was strictly against that i'm not going to give phone but we have so to now so you have to do you think that uh, online education has added an external burden to the parents okay so ma'am uh, yes in a way that it has added somewhere down the line some burden has passed on to children not uh, on parents not only economically maybe they were well uh, you know well equipped earlier but yes uh, in other ways and means also now in most of the houses you don't have domestic help parents are anyway trying to work right or the parents are working right so certainly that burden has come because at the back of their mind they are always uh, conscious that what my child is doing how the learning is happening is everything you know even technical issues are there like we are also exactly. talking somewhere the video goes and half of the class gets missed right so they will have to take care that you know whatever was taught in that half of the class parents will have to teach it and they cannot teach it that well how teachers do since exactly. they are not aware so yes yes that uh, burden is there both emotionally and pedagogically so it is both ways so like in a way we can say that uh, online education okay it is good in some sense till the pandemic is on right it's there but uh, initially we can start with this but eventually we'll have to come back to the normal uh, conventional education system because so, yes, nobody, uh, we nobody, have knows, nobody knows how long this is going to go on absolutely so ma'am it's uh, not only you know that uh, we will have to come back but even once we come back online classes are not going to go away anytime soon this is for sure plus you know the whole pedagogy the whole teaching structure is going to revamp all of a sudden because yes like you said we don't know for how long it's going to go on so it is exactly. the time that we start finding alternative uh, you know ways and means that uh, how we are going to teach the child 
keeping uh, an amalgamation of both the things online and offline right, right so right. yes it is not going to go but uh, coming back to the new normal one good thing which i find is uh, the bags would become lighter i believe right because yeah, that because is what we have been struggling with going to be my next question only like uh, after okay. all the new normal the dream every parent had that uh, the school bags should be light would that be possible certainly mm -hmm. certainly because you know what uh, yeah so uh, this is one thing that uh, children were just taking uh, the weight of around uh, 3 kgs to 8 kgs every day to the school exactly. and uh, there were so many medical hazards so many yeah correct correct so there were so many medical uh, hazards that were there and uh, yes certainly we are going to see lighter bags this is one thing i'm very happy about homework is going to you know go away and uh, homework would certainly go for digital platform again like many of the school already were doing it but others would also you know follow it pretty soon so teachers who used to say get your class for copy homework copy and all those copy that is not going to happen now so yes good thing in this situation so uh, what would you say about uh, digital natives and bulldozer parents sorry parents if i mentioned is that this is just a term. okay so even uh, you know i'm in 100% agreement reason being ma'am digital natives yes because uh, like in one of my webinars earlier i said that we are dealing with uh, people uh, with students who are surrounded by eyes and ears right iphone ipad emails instagram everything they are so aware of and teachers they need to upgrade themselves first to teach them better right so exactly. it's a huge pressure why are we talking about parents it's also about uh, you know educators that they would they are highly highly pressurized In so fact, that even educators uh, are parents even educators are parents most of them yeah correct, so correct. so it's well. like uh, <laughs> so educators you know it's a burden on them also to deal with such bright children who are technically so savvy and uh, yes when we talk about the bulldozer parents like you said uh, these parents would ensure like how does a bulldozer work it removes all the obstacles that is coming in its way right similarly these parents what they're going to do they would leave no stone unturned to just pluck out everything from uh, the road which their children are going to travel giving them all kinds of gadgets making availability of internet wi-fi and uh, everything in place so yes plus they will also be dealing i don't know how many uh, families would be there but i've seen few they will also be bridging the gap between two nations and that is a very difficult thing to cope up you know when grandparents are there at home who are strictly against children using gadgets and uh, which is very very true and uh, you have to make all things available to children so they will also be dealing with that kind of obstacle so yes again that is uh, these bulldozer parents would be required when we are talking about online learning and ensuring fighting all odds and removing the obstacles from children's path so that is going to I have a question from Dr. Aruna Vadkar from, uh, from Bangalore. She says, yes. bags being lighter is understandable, but how do we measure the mental pressure? Okay, so ma'am, see, in few of the school, like mental pressure, we cannot measure, but we will have to give lots of opportunities to children where they come up and they speak. Like also I had a session yesterday where we were talking about EQ right there has to be a lot of social uh, we cannot have social uh, you know coming together and doing interaction but teacher can have lots of best practices uh, in the life uh, skill arena and few things need to be discussed with children there is a lot of counseling that would be required from children and as uh, you know from teachers and educators and as well so children not only uh, would have to go for academic classes but we need counselors pitching in here so their mental well-being has to be taken care of. Uh, they they have to be, you know, you have to follow certain practices uh, in school where uh, you are dealing with the emotions of children. Like, you know, 
so how you feel grateful how you are feeling uh, discussing about the various emotions with children accepting failure even jealousy is not a bad emotion if it is healthy right so uh, you know lot of practices will have to be like i said the whole pedagogical structure needs to be revisited all over again so it's not only academic but also emotional well being of children that would have to be addressed right 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 so uh, what is the emergence of uh, distance learning and digital learning okay uh, so ma'am like during earlier times if i talk about our grandparents right they knew tables may be up to 50 right they were just rattling off the tables up to 50 in our generation i don't know more than 20 for sure and uh, when it comes to my children you know it forcing them for up to 10 is also there so because of lot of digitization that is happening in the field of education uh, this distance learning is going to come up for sure like we earlier distance learning was being looked upon right uh, people used to say that uh, this person has done some distance learning course it doesn't hold that value but now we don't have many option so rather than going ahead and uh, not doing that uh, you know well with the uh, in such a situation going to colleges may not suffice so yes distance learning will be a major major option that everybody would like to go for so uh, there would be emergence of distance learning they will get more respect the degrees would get a lot of acknowledgement and uh, you know even foreign universities they had this culture since long that they had uh, you know open program uh, across the globe which you know it's very very recognized but in india somehow we had this uh, at the back of our mind that uh, distance learning is not that good however mm-hmm. it will get its due credit now uh, there is a lot of work that you know even those people make while creating the uh, whole content oh, online courses and all yes yes so i think distance learning would be the new emerging thing how would you distinguish blended learning and personalized education okay uh, see ma'am blended learning is something now we have made students the sole uh, you know uh, caretaker of their education earlier mm-hmm. it was teacher led pedagogical structure that we were following and now it has transformed to student led so these online uh, platform what they are doing is they are bringing the both together so yes this blend blend of teacher and student will have to work out well otherwise the learning is going to suffer for sure and uh, there is a lot of personalized education reason being uh, the availability of teacher would be more through whatsapp or through uh, you know they share their numbers as well so blended learning is teacher led and student led there are a lot of projects that we will have to develop uh, we cannot go with the uh, you know the earlier content the bookish content what we need to do now is we will have to revamp the whole content the whole curriculum and give them investigative project give them lots of uh, you know things that they can take care of even uh, the personalized education like i said that the children they are in charge of their learning they will have to find out doubts themselves they will have to see where they falter and they will have to come back to the teacher with all their doubts so that they can clear it timely so again that openness has is available now right earlier it was like teacher has taught and student goes home but now that availability is there that you know blend is there uh, let us re uh, revamp our content all over again let us not debate over the certain things focus on the main thing the teaching methods need to be changed right 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 so uh, do you think that uh, after uh, these uh, things are revamped and uh, like online education is prevalent what would be the percentage of students taking online courses and personalized education see ma'am uh, most of the students would still stick to personalized education because nothing can change that 
right still a teacher's face is a warm you know feeling Te exactly. still when you know uh, that respectful fear exists so this will never go thankfully and uh, online classes will be there what is exactly happening is, is that you know how are you going to assess children how are you going to assess them on uh, the content part right now the assessment has shifted to their integrity part now the assessment has shifted to whether they will stick to the truth or not right exactly. we are not assessing the content anymore whether they will do it truthfully or not that has to be assessed further so uh, nobody can replace a teacher no technology can replace a teacher however the teacher would be more of a facilitator now rather than the lecturer uh, they used to be earlier so that is going to change so do you think with the prevailing online education thing the uh, concept of mcqs is going to increase certainly so concept of mcq because that is the best way now i'll just tell you something i also am doing few courses for my learning and uh, it was a wonderful thing that i came across the questions were posted on zoom and uh, the answer you had to do it on kahoot.it so there was this color scheme and immediately you have to select the color so uh, along with your speed and the accuracy so it was quite a fun method to do so uh, isn't it a warm uh, welcome in fact that you know we were doing lot of cramming and lot of uh, uh, things you know uh, we were just just gulping it down so it's better to understand it and uh, do it like in one of my platforms i said that why are we asking children to give answers this time let us ask them to make questions right? exactly because ultimately exactly. you know they will go through the course all over again they will find questions they will come up with even better questions at times you know they can think differently think innovatively and that is what needs to be developed in children now rather than making them gulp down those uh, concepts that we wanted them to so it's better you know that uh, such things come up what do you think like after this yeah. like, entire educational scenario what will be the means to an upskilling of students and teacher uh ma'am sorry i missed it What after the current the... educational scenario what would be the reskilling and upskilling of students and teachers okay so yes that would see a high an all time high reason being uh see if i want my children to learn augmented reality if i will have to teach through ar if i will have to teach through vr i need to know it myself right so there has to be this is the time this is an era we are dealing with where we need to unlearn everything that we knew till now learn it all over again and relearn it to strengthen right so it's not only students that we are going to teach but simultaneously as educators we will have to learn a lot because those technicalities even teaching through new ways and means uh, learning experiential learning uh, going for blended learning Uh, changing the whole pedagogical approach so of course you need a lot of reskilling or upskilling yourself maybe you knew but again you would have to enhance your skill and the same goes with students as well even the students will have to restructure their thoughts they will have to be prepared that you know they are not going to answer those crammed questions anymore they will have to come up uh, they will have to face a new set of question they will have to face a different uh, way of learning maybe students uh, might be asked to go out and survey collect some data come back and analyze it further or some investigative project but uh, there is you know there is one thing and you being a special educator i would like to ask one thing ma'am uh, there is something called as phoba and uh, you know that fear of being alone or fear yeah. of missing out right so uh, this is my worry that once we are you know throwing children towards the online platform like you said that teaching you need a teacher there right exactly. and you don't know that if i'm going in the right direction or not i am taking charge of my learning i am an independent learner maybe i'm doing wonders with my learning but somewhere down the line there is fear of being alone there is fear of missing out right exactly. anyway our students 
they have uh, you know they had to leave their exams in many of the school uh, 10 12 student uh, you know there was so much of doubt so much of ambiguity happening so what about such students see these so that students, was my question these students this is this is really a concern of worry uh, like this this is something you know we all are worried about especially with those kids who are facing these problems so what the teachers and what we special educators are doing is we are taking one to one sessions with them right because they are basically as anuradha ma'am also mentioned and manish ji also mentioned that they are basically kinesthetic learners the things that we are sending them or uh, uh, like the written content it's very difficult for them to understand how to go about it because the main problem with them is that they get lost in the lines between the lines they get lost right so they are thinking like one to one uh, one to one sessions and that is how they are coping up this is uh, i'm talking with those kids who are facing the who are having learning problem i never call it a disability I always call it a difficulty because it is not curable but it can be improved situation can be improved correct because you know with the advent of the things that are happening these days uh, with you know whatever is happening around these such these kids these kids do feel left, these, 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 these left out because uh, they say that we they never compete to the level of other students what i tell them is you can definitely do it the only way is the perception is different absolutely so uh, yes even these students like you said they need to be dealt one on one they need to be taken care of and uh, yes uh, ma'am upcoming i think there would be a lot of courses on mooc also mooc courses will be there uh, swayam is giving such wonderful courses uh, disha is giving mhrd has taken so many initiatives in this field so uh, let us applaud them as well and which is going to be an upcoming trend for upskilling and reskilling as well right so uh, yes and the assessment process like you spoke about that would be revamp the kind of questions student need uh, were answering till now that would fade away and uh, the main thing is like we were focusing on lot of uh, things we were debating over lot of things like uh, whether online not online but now is the time taking a step back is more important restructuring the whole education is more important you know uh, changing the way we were teaching is more important the content that will go to children has to change now you know we are not telling them about the real life scenario which is happening we have not revised history after 1947 we are not talking about uh, you know the real spirit of the education so too much focus has gone on academic let us uh, take this thing in hand develop solidarity in students let us develop resilience in students and that is much more important rather than you know uh, focusing more on academic academic which is you know any way we are doing so whatever right. ways it means right. so god uh, do you think in a way we are going to return back to the conventional in fact i, I would say the ancient way of learning the practical learning in uh, so certain in, in technical terms if we say it's experiential learning experiential okay so yes we are not going to uh, go back to the traditional classroom because teacher themselves have come a far way right you know they have come uh, far ahead of what and how they were teaching so they themselves would not like to go back to the traditional classroom how uh, because you know they, it's this, this is actually fun no when you are interacting one on one with your student in whatever platform and uh, so uh, yes they are not going to go plus it has given them a broader perspective uh, of using technology uh, technology they were running away from you know they had no choice but to adapt it quickly even the parents have accepted it somewhere down the line uh, one thing you know uh, having said whatever i said till now i my only fear is how are we going to get inclusivity in education 
not all children they would be uh, you know uh, very well versed with technology there would be children who would not know how to use that technology uh, like i will just uh, tell you one of uh, the things which i read recently one thing was uh, in london they have this museum where uh, neuro sensors are used for uh, blind people even uh, somewhere i don't uh, remember the place they are using the vr glasses for deaf people where uh, somebody is telling them about all the dialogues and all the sound through uh, this you know sign language and this was fantastic but our infrastructure is not ready with such things how are we going to deal with that this is something we need to cater to and uh, we also need to think about sooner or later and get that inclusivity back in our classroom because uh, again like i read somewhere that school is not a paradise but it is a paradise that can be created so a classroom with all its limitations still has a great possibility right there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of things that we can do there are a lot of uh, best practices that we can get and our educators are hugely creative i may say uh, they are going to do it sooner or later but yes uh, my uh, you know speaking out these thing was that we need to keep these things also in mind somewhere down the line right so we can say that uh, in a way our uh, education system is heading towards a very very different platform uh, till, uh, like uh, which is which is supposed to be the new normal post pandemic yeah. And like so, uh, we uh, need to take initiative to encourage our students, parents, teachers to stick to it to be safe and be healthy. Certainly. So we need to, uh, you know, this is but, the time but, like never before. But I have a question. Uh, a yes, very serious one. Like, uh, the schools, it's from it's from both sides. It's not biased by the teachers or the parents. Because I am both. I'm a parent and a teacher both. Right. Same. I want to know, like you being an auditor, you might be uh, auditing n number of schools, n number of chains of schools. So I want to know, like, how are the teachers going to survive when we as parents are not ready to pay the fees? Because okay. online education so is not <laughs> online education is not being considered like they are teaching whereas we teachers are putting in all our efforts to Certainly, yes to educate the children and somewhere or the other not i'm not talking about generally all the manage, school managements but some of the school managements are taking the fees and cutting the salaries of the teachers why is it so okay so ma'am of course uh, you know i cannot say on a national platform that i know such a school or i know this but yes what you are no, saying you i have, have even witnessed i can also not permit you to mention the name of the school because this is something you know we are yes, not uh, I would certainly know. talk about it yes i would certainly talk about it see ma'am uh, let us understand the perspective from both the ends right and having said that my uh, you know ultimate line i'm saying before what uh, the way i would want it to end is teachers are sufferers somewhere or the other you know uh, because i know schools uh, who are actually not in a state uh, their uh, you know balance sheets uh, say it loud and clear they're not in a state to pay the fee on the other hand yes there are schools who have been running you, uh, you know successfully for so many years who have got branches and branches and uh, they are still not paying the fee to their teachers which is you know so so wrong and coming to the parents perspective again the same thing applies there as well there are parents uh, who are not getting salaries especially in hospitality and travel industry where uh, which has been badly hit so they are not getting salaries 50% 75% cuts have been made uh, in such uh, you know places and uh, there are people who are not staying in their native place going out they are paying rents and uh, it's not very easy so as it said that uh, you know you pay the tuition fee right 
but that tuition fee at times uh, consist of 70 80% of the total fee amount so the schools it it has to be a very very customized uh, you know solution from people who are playing the pivotal role because one size will not fit in all there have to be clear cut guidelines for schools they have to be you know uh, this is uh, not going to be you know this everybody has to do not everybody can do everything because there are parents who are actually suffering there are parents who are you know uh, using this uh, situation for their benefits so it's both ways and the same applies for schools there are schools who are not in a state to pay and there are school who have good amount uh, with them but they are still not paying just to use the situation so but what, uh, what ultimately who is suffering the teachers what That's about what those teachers got who are uh, just to save their jobs who are giving online classes twice a day thrice a day and uh, they are not able, they are not getting the uh, uh, complete salaries so ma'am this is the time when even the teachers need to show the solidarity they have to put it down somewhere what they want to accept see if there are teachers you know who are okay with the idea that i'm just you know not going to school taking two three hours of classes otherwise i would have taken eight or nine hours of classes having said that there is so much of preparedness that goes uh, you know if you are teaching you can just go and teach in the classroom but when you are on an online platform you have to be ready with so many uploads uh, your ppt has to be uploaded your videos have to be uploaded there is so much of content that you have to push online not uh, you know all teachers are prepared so it's not only the 2 3 hours there are so many hours that go in preparedness as well so yes teachers would have to come together they will have to make it loud and clear and uh, many in many of the schools the online classes have resumed full fledged it's like for 4 5 hours there they have they should pay teachers the complete salary you know let us not be a scapegoat and make somebody suffer so teachers are ultimate sufferers sorry uh, you know they are uh, there and school should not cut a sorry figure this is the time you know parents are paying fees uh, not all parents are there who would say i will not pay fee right there have been years that they are associated with the school uh they can also go and tell the school that right now we are not in a situation let us you know give us some time we are in uh, you know we are in agreement like schools can do them yes yes which now right so if there are only 10 15% of parents who are not ready to pay it's not you know 85 parents are 85% would be ready to pay but just they don't have that kind of money right now so schools will also have to support their teachers because in the coming uh, days it's teachers who are going to pull up their show like always right so no teachers makes no school even no students make no school so there has to be somewhere down the line we will have to bridge it up and uh, come up with a creative solution right 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 um gauri you were mentioning about moh it will be prevalent could you explain it a bit yes so ma'am uh, moh courses are the short term courses like uh, if i was talking about swayam right so you uh, do it for few hours or few weeks or few months and then you get a certificate uh, you know uh, for that so moh courses would be uproaring in near future because uh, like i don't know much about augmented reality so i may opt for a moh course so it is a short term course i can opt for it i can learn it i'll get a certificate for the same or maybe a diploma so it's like you know it's just like a degree or diploma for a short term course so mm-hmm. i think that uh, would be there and uh, they would be emerging out Great, 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 great! It was a pleasure, Gauri. You gave us lots of insights into the current and new model that we would say. And let's see how things go about. Let's pray, all of us. Let's pray for the betterment of our children and for a better future for our country. And let's also pray that you know the whole community comes together and finds a solution. 
and let us all work together so that you know because the learners are at the center stage no you know even the parents even the schools nobody wants bad for them let us come up together find a solution and work towards you know find coming out of it as we uh, you know winners so all the very best to everybody i hope i made some sense somewhere and thank you, you so much reena ma'am for calling me you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> bye bye take care so ladies and gentlemen tomorrow we will be back again with um, mr anil swaroop he is retired ias and secretary to education department of india he has served the country for more than 38 years see you tomorrow same time 11 o'clock bye bye till then